Hey there everyone, welcome to second video of Chatpack Compose series. So in the last video we had just an introduction, a brief idea about Jetpack Compose. We learned how to create a project, what are composables, why do we use Jetpack Compose, right? So I assume that you must have watched that video. So if you haven't watched that video already, the link is in the description. You can check out that video. And in case you know the basics of Jetpack Compose, you are good to go with this video as well. So now let us just discuss what we are going to learn in this video so in this video we'll be learning how do we add multiple texts in the layout so in the last video we have seen that we were adding only one string one string into our layout so if we are adding 10 strings 10 different texts into our layout how do we do that what is what are columns and rows in jetpack compose right and what are the modifiers for these columns and rows so we, we are going to discuss the first two things in detail and we'll be having a basic idea of these modifiers because we'll be covering this topic in the next video in depth so without wasting any time let's get started So guys, if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and press the bell notification icon for saving the notification of the upcoming videos. And by the end of the video, if you like the video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button as well. So this is the project which we created in the last video. So I guess uh, I just remember that I forgot to tell you one thing. So we have discussed what are the composable functions and we call this function inside this set content method, right? So it is not compulsory that we create a composable function and call it here, right? So we can directly write this line of code here. So let me just comment it out, right? And if I just delete uh, this whole thing, and we have to comment out this as well. So now I can directly call the text method Here. right so I can do that if I just run this app quickly so you can see we have got this text hello Fox Android so why do we then create these composable functions the reason for this is same as we do in a regular programming right so for every different functionality in our app we create different functions right for example if uh, we are writing the backend code in java or kotlin we used to create different functions for different things so that our code doesn't look messy right it is readable so that is the same reason that we are doing here otherwise we have to write everything inside this set content method the second reason is in the last video i have said that using jetpack compose the ui code is reusable right for example i create 20 methods in this particular project for showing different things for example this this function create this function to so show some text then we create some complex ui so we create different functions so in the second project i can simply just copy that function paste it there and use it right so the best practice we should follow is to create composable functions and call those functions inside this set content method so this is what i felt that i should tell you guys right and we can delete okay let me just create this we can delete this thing and we can call this function here right so let's rerun this app so okay we have got this text right so now first we are going to learn about rows and columns so uh, to give you a basic idea about rows and columns if you remember in our xml code we used to uh, have different layouts right and one among them was linear layout inside the linear layout tag we had two options that we want the horizontal linear layout or vertical linear layout right so similarly in jetpack compose your row is similar to a horizontal linear layout and your column is similar to a vertical linear layout so let us just uh, try to use that so for example 
if inside this method I put two more text so control D and if I'm not using this right like share So this can be the case in our real app that we are going to build in the coming tutorials, right? We we can use uh, multiple texts, right? So if I just run this app, you can see here the texts are overlapping on one another, right? So first we have this text, and then this text lies above that. And similarly this lies above these two texts and finally we have this text on the top of all these three texts so this is not what we want right we want it to be arranged either in a horizontal manner or a vertical manner so to do that we use columns and rows we have overlapping of all those four texts so for that we'll use column so we are not going to pass any parameters if I just put all these texts inside this column you'll see I just try to build and refresh this preview so you can see now all our four texts are aligned in a vertical manner so if I use row instead of a column Need to import this alt enter import the row and fill and refresh so now all the texts are aligned in a horizontal fashion so a row means that all the text will be aligned in a row and column means all the text will be aligned in a column right so i guess for this tutorial now we'll I'll go with column fill and refresh so okay now if I just just put parentheses we can pass multiple parameters inside this column right so if you remember in XML when we were using a layout tag we used to set the width of the layout right we had the option to set the width of the layout the height of the layout the background color so all those things can be done inside this column parenthesis right here we can pass different parameters so we are not going to discuss all the parameters but we'll see uh, some basic parameters in this video right so let us just play around with uh, some of these parameters that we need to pass inside this function so to set the layout the background color the width of the layout so we have uh, a particular class for that that is called modifier so let us just create that so make sure while uh, importing the class you import this particular class androidx.compose.ui so we need to select this one so modifier dot so here you can see we have a lot of options to set the background of this particular column right to set the width height and we have this function called fill maximum width that will fill up all the width available for this particular column then we have the offsets lot many options are there that we are going to discuss in depth in the coming videos right so the next video is dedicated for modifiers only so in, in this video I, I just want to give you a brief uh, introduction the idea about these modifiers right so let us just set the background color for this particular column so color dot gray let us just see what happens if we just select this color and pass to this function let's build and refresh so here you can see the background color of this column has been changed to gray and let us just try to add one more property uh, that is fill maximum width right if we just call this method 
and then we build and refresh so here you can see uh, you can see that the width of this particular device has been changed because we have set to fill maximum width we have called this function so what it will do is it will allot all the width that is available on the screen to this particular column and similarly we will we can modify uh, some more things and one more thing i want to tell you guys is to how, how do we align the text in this particular column so for that we have a method called horizontal alignment is equal to alignment center horizontally right let's just build and refresh and see what happens with this particular parameter so now we can see that all our text has been aligned horizontally right now they are at the center of the screen in respect to the horizontal orientation of the view so these are the modifiers right i i hope that you got the basic idea that whenever we used to call the tags the different tags and we used to pass the width of that particular uh, text or the layout the height what is the idea of that text all those things can be done by passing the parameters inside this column function or a row function similarly we can do these things with a row as well if we call the row function right so uh, i do not want you guys to get flooded with a lot of information I, I just want to give you time to digest what we have discussed today so that is pretty much everything about this tutorial right we are going to stop right here and i hope that whatever i have explained in this tutorial you guys have understood that right but still if you have any doubt you can always ask me in the comment section or you can dm me on instagram the Instagram username will be there on the screen right now. If you like the video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And in case you're new to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and press the bell notification icon for receiving notification of the upcoming videos. So that is it for today's video. See another video. Bye.